Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how to blur a background to help your subject stand out from the background. Just like that. There we go. Straightforward, easy process. Uses a few tools, but nothing that's very difficult. Let's go ahead and get to work on this one. And the first thing we'll need to do is to download this picture. Let me bring that website up for you. Here we go. I found this over on Pixabay. And there's a link. I'll put this in the description. Over here, click on download. I'm using this one right here, 1920 by 2880. Go ahead and download this on your computer someplace where it's easy to find and then open that up inside of Photoshop Elements. Okay, back to the project. There we go. And before we go any further on this, just wanted to mention that if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, then a great place to go is with my complete training course. I'll put a link for that in the description. Just go to How to Gurus and you can find all my Photoshop Elements courses there along with everything else that I have. You can become an expert in Photoshop Elements in no time. Okay, let's go back and take a look at this. I'll just close this down and open up the original file. And that's right here. There we go. And the first thing we need to do is to make two copies of the background layer. The first one is just our safety, right click and duplicate layer, choose OK. This will end up being our blur layer. So we can go ahead, double click on the name here and just call this one blur. Hit the enter key, there we go. Let's copy it again, either layer, doesn't matter which one you copy, right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. This is gonna be our subject layer. There we are. So the first thing that we need to do is to separate the subject out from the background. And you can use any technique that you want. On this one, it's pretty straightforward to just use the select subject up here, select and subject. If you have one of the more recent versions of Photoshop Elements, if you don't, then just use one of your standard selection tools in here, like the polygonal lasso tool, make a selection and do it that way. Okay, now that we're here, we'll need to clean this up. The select subject never does a perfect job and it will need cleaning. I'll just scroll in here. Now I have the wheel on my mouse set for scrolling. And if you don't have that, just go up here to edit, come down to preferences, general, and it's that option right here, zoom with scroll wheel. It makes it really easy to zoom in and out like that just by using the wheel. Okay, now we need to clean up some of these areas that are wrong on this image. There's a little bit of the background showing right down here at the bottom. You can kind of see that. It's pretty small. Let's fix that. I'll just grab the polygonal lasso tool here. It's set for subtract. And then I'll just click in around here with this tool. Let's make a selection around that bit right in here. Come outside, double click, and that takes out that little bit. Okay, and then move your image. You need to do the same thing in here. We need to take out this bit in here and the bit up in there. So I'll start right down here. I'll do this in two passes to make this easy because our legs are getting very close together there on the calves. So I'll take it just part way up right here and we'll come down and we'll do the top part as a second pass. Now with this tool, you click and then you move your mouse, find your next position, click again, and Photoshop Elements comes in and connects those points with lines and that makes your selection. Okay, let's go ahead and get this top section up in here. Now take it right down to there, there we go, and up around this side. Okay, that takes care of those. Now over here, left hand side, it missed this outer part of the leg pretty dramatically. So let's change here to add and I'll come over here and then just come right around her calf right in here. And let's just grab that part that the subject select missed. This occasionally happens. It looks for hard edges, but it doesn't see an edge. It might miss that edge. So you have to always come back in and double check with this tool. That's okay. Sometimes there'll be like a corner in here you want to fix like this side. It looks pretty good too. That's all fine. Notice that there's good contrast here between the foreground and the background. So the subject select had a real easy time finding that. That's most of the spots in here. Now I missed a little bit of the sleeve right here. Not really important, but I'll go ahead and add that in anyway. I can leave that in or out. It really doesn't matter that much. Okay, it gave her kind of webbed fingers. Let's fix this. I'm first going to add in the fingertips that it missed. Let's come around here, we'll double click, add that in. And same thing around this finger up here. Now luckily we're putting this back on top of itself. So if we miss anything, we'll still see the same image from in behind and it should look okay. Okay, let's now take out these bits with the subtract option. And when you're working with this tool, don't click too quickly or it's going to collapse your selection and you have to start over again. 
So just click on a pause, click on a pause, and just take your time. Now the most important part about this project and almost any project I do is making these selections. Everything else goes fast and easy. This is actually the hard part of the process always. So take your time and do a good selection and then everything else will fall in place real nicely. This is what you would call the money part of the whole project is making a good selection. Okay, outside, double click. That's fixed. We'll do the hair with refined edge, which is what I normally do. It's a little bit right in here. I'm just going to leave that alone. I think that's just fine. Let's check the fingers up here. Okay, same problem. I'm on subtract, so I'll go ahead and take this piece out here. And then we'll go back and add in the parts that are missing. Double click, there we are. Back to add. And I'll start down here. This is the shadowy parts because those are the parts that are closer in value to the background. So the parts that Photoshop Elements just didn't see. We can see it because we can see those color differences. Photoshop Elements does a good job with that subject select. But again, depending upon your image, there may be spots that it just doesn't understand what's going on. So you have to come back in and do those manually. But it still saves you a lot of time not having to manually do the whole image. Okay, let's come around here and back around here again and up over here and back around. There we go. That's good. This side looks good. Let's now do the hair in here. Click on Refine Edge. I usually leave all this stuff just as is. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of contrast if I think I need that. I think we're going to be okay on this one. I always use the overlay color here, which is a kind of a pinkish coloration in there. Makes it much, much easier. Now you take your brush, see that plus sign? Keep the plus sign outside, and then brush into the part you want to cover. Right now I'm on the default setting here of 35 pixels, which is just fine for this picture. Normally I like coming in at about two to three times the width of the area that I want to fix. And this is just about what that is. And we'll go along here. You see how easy having that pink makes it to see what's going on. Again, if we miss anything in here, like this bit right up in here, just change over here to the eraser tool. And I'll just clean that up right in there. And right there. Leave everything else alone. And that's good. Let's now take this out to a new layer with layer mask. Choose OK. And there's a new background. I'll use the Control Zero keyboard shortcut. If I hide everything else, you can see there we have a nice separate figure distinct from the background. Okay, now we need to go back to our blur layer right here, and we need to blur the layer out. So for that, let's go up to the Gaussian Blur, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur right here. And for this one, I'd have a pretty high blur. I did mine at 13.9. You could just type this in 14 if you want to, basically the same thing. There's before, here's after. So that's a pretty dramatic blur in here. And choose OK. Now the problem with this is it looks great up here, but it looks fake at the bottom because obviously if your feet are right against that bottom down here, then you really should be able to see the same focus where the feet are. So we need to get rid of the blur down below and bring the blur in up here. And we can do that very easily with a layer mask. Go up here to the layer mask button, click on that. Here's our layer mask. Now with the layer mask, white shows black hides. So if I have black at the bottom and then a gradient going up to white, we'll see our blur layer up here. We won't see any blur down here and that's what we need exactly for this image. So let's go over here to our gradient tool. Click on the gradient right here. Now the third one over is black to white. The first one is foreground to background. Right now ours are black to white, but I like going here because this is always straight black to white. Choose that, choose okay. Now I want black at the bottom, I want white at the top. So we're good. Take this little plus sign, come down to the bottom someplace, hold the shift key down so it makes a perfectly vertical line and pull up and go just off the top, let go. And that gives us this gradient over here. And then notice the area around her feet is in sharp focus. And then it goes away to soft focus at the top and looks very, very natural that way as if we did that in camera by using a depth of field technique to blur out the background. So we've mimicked that effect. So that's all good. Now I still want to have better separation here between the foreground and the background. And we can easily do that by doing some color differences in here, just by separating out the color differences. If I make the background more bluish, make the foreground subject more orangish, it will then separate those two out. Let's go ahead, we'll do that one quickly. So on the blur background, make sure you're on this background. 
go up here to the layer menu, come down to new adjustment layer and come down to photo filter, where it says use previous layer, check that, choose OK, and let's change this to a cooling filter. I'm using the 80. It just cools the background down. And notice how already, by cooling up the background, she separates out quite a bit. Let's just close that. Let's do the exact same thing for her, but the opposite direction. That's our new layer up here. Back up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and photo filter. And again, check that checkbox, choose OK. The default one here is the warming filter 85, and that's what I want. I'll show and hide that there's without and here's with. So adding in a bit of warmth in there makes her look a lot better. The last thing we need to do is just to clean up her values a bit in here. There's no real good blacks in this. It's, we're a little low on the contrast. We can leave our background a little low contrast. That's fine, but I want to have her a bit more contrasty. So come back down to this level, come back up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels right here and keep that checked. Choose OK. And let's just pull in the blacks just a little bit like that. Don't go too far or it blocks up. But just a little bit, just richens up the blacks like that right here. And then pull the middle control to the right just a little bit. It darkens her down just a touch. And then bring in the right side. That is the brights or the whites. So we've increased our contrast carefully by using this layer. Increased the darkness, increased the lights, and moved our grays a bit more towards the dark side. So that then increases our overall contrast on our foreground image. And there we go. Looking great. Let's now check this. I'll take this background layer, right click on this, duplicate layer, choose OK, drag that to the top up here. There's the original, and here's our newly adjusted background. So as you can see, very easy to do. Now, I've already mentioned getting my courses to really help you learn how to use Photoshop Elements. If you want additional help on that, if you want to have text in here, so you have some text based instructions, step by step instructions, things like that, I have a different program for that. It's called my HTG Photo Coach. And I'll put a link for that in the description as well. Don't forget to hit that like button. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. I'm trying to get the subscriber count up here on this brand new channel. My main channel, the original channel is 75,000 subscribers. I haven't hit 3,000 yet here on this new channel. Let's get that number up. Just hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time.